This is a bit of a different kind of photo because it's a cow. And normally on the blog, it's pictures of like leaves and people and nature, but not really farm animals. So it's a bit different here. And despite living most of my life in rural states like Nebraska, Minnesota, Oklahoma, I honestly don't have much exposure to farms. I've lived in cities most of my life. So it's kind of a treat when I get to go to a farm. Well, the other day I was being uh, interviewed for a local, like, um, a PBS-style broadcast. Uh, it's this local, like, something that OSU produces. It's called Sun Up Oklahoma, and it's just a little half-hour thing that they show on 7.30 in the mornings on the local PBS station. Anyway, they interviewed me because of my experience with one of the classes I took here at OSU, and it was an agriculture class so they took me to the OSU owned dairy barn where they use they, it's a real dairy barn and it's on a dairy farm and they use it for uh, training agriculture students. So they they took me out there and it was uh, two people, an interviewer and a cameraman, and we stood in this barn where there's these cows like eating hay and and mooing and and doing cow type things, and we're doing this interviews it, because I knew that this interview was going to happen. I brought my camera with, my D7100, which is now, as much as I talk about my D200 and how awesome it is, and yeah, yeah, it's 10 years old, but it's so cool. Well, now that I got my D750 as my main camera, my D7100, which was formerly my main camera, is now sort of my backup everyday throw it in the bag and run around with it camera. And my D200 just kind of sits on the shelf. So as much as I've talked about how awesome the D200 is, well, eh. Maybe it's not so awesome anymore because I've got such a, a much better camera. So I hope that's not mean of me to say. But anyway, so I brought my D my D seventy one hundred with me, fifty millimeter lens because I was going to try and get a picture for the blog. And right away I realized that this is not going to work because the space we were in, which I'd never been there before, and I, I realized this as we were in the place as we went there, is it, it was really constrained. I've got a picture of it that I took with my iPhone on the blog and. There was no room to walk around and, and really get a wide shot of anything. That picture that you see on the blog that I took with my iPhone, imagine that like really, really cropped in and you could just see a lamp post or a, a, one of the support posts. That was all you could see with the 50 millimeter lens. I happened to get this one shot of this cow though. And it was actually the first, I tried like 20 different pictures from all sorts of different angles. And none of them worked except this one, which was incidentally the first picture I took. And it turned out really well, and I'm really pleased with it. On the blog, I mention uh, auto ISO. And this is something I've known about for a while, but I've never used until I got my D750. So what auto ISO does, and I encourage you to try it if, if you've got it on your camera, is you tell the camera what minimum shutter speed you want to use before it starts ramping up the ISO. So let's say you're shooting in aperture priority and you're shooting at F4. Well, F4 doesn't let in a whole ton of light. And if you're in a darker environment, what's it gonna do if you're shooting in aperture priority? Well, to get a proper exposure, it's going to slow the shutter speed down. Using auto ISO, you tell your camera the minimum shutter speed that you want it to use. So it's gonna slow the shutter speed down to let's say a 60th of a second. And it's going to go no slower than that. And instead, it's actually going to start raising the ISO. So the trade-off is you're going to get a slightly grainier picture. And you can set the maximum ceiling of the ISO. I have always dismissed this because I thought, well, I don't want the camera making decisions for me, blah, blah, blah. And I realized when I got my D750, this is actually a really useful tool. And I never used it before because I wasn't comfortable shooting at higher ISOs. Now I am, and I, on my D750, I tell it to use a maximum shutter speed or a, the slowest possible shutter speed of twice the focal length of my lens. So if I'm shooting with the 50 millimeter lens in aperture priority, it's going to use the slowest possible shutter speed, which is, well, it's never going to go slower than a hundredth of a second because that's twice the focal length of a 50 millimeter lens. And if I attach a 35 millimeter lens, it's going to only go as slow as 170th a second and so on. And instead, it's going to raise the ISO. On my D750, I got it set to a max of 6400, which is still a pretty good picture. On my D7100, uh, I set the auto ISO now, since <laughs> learning how to do this on my D750, I started setting the auto ISO to 
twice the focal length of my lens, so still a uh, in this case, if I'm shooting with the 50, it'd be a hundredth of a second, and a max ISO of 1600, which is about what I'm comfortable shooting at without getting a whole lot of noise in the picture. That is how I got the picture you see here with this cow. If you look closely, like really closely, you're going to see some noise and grain. But it's still a really sharp photo, even though it's ISO 1600. And I've come to learn and be more um, comfortable with shooting at higher ISOs because if it's the difference between getting a blurry photo and getting a slightly grainy photo that you can't really see the grain anyway – just take the slightly grainy photo because at least it's sharp. So anyway, that's probably more than you want to know about auto ISO. Sorry for the long podcast today, but hopefully it was at least slightly informative. So if you take anything away from this, it's if your camera has an auto ISO, give it a shot and try it and see. On my D750, and I'm just, I promise this is the last thing, I have stopped shooting in shutter priority. I used to shoot in shutter priority because I wanted to make sure that my uh, that I was always getting a, a shutter speed fast enough to get a to freeze the action and when I'm doing portraits I I need to freeze the action but now using auto ISO I'm always going to get a fast shutter speed it's never going to go slower than a hundredth of a second uh, if I'm shooting with my 50 or whatever it is like twice the focal length of my lens so I can just worry about the aperture, which is awesome. I can just tell it to shoot for the I, – I can, I can make the composition I want with the aperture I want to get the depth of field that I want and the light that I want and not worry about the shutter speed. It's so cool. Give it a try, folks. I think you'll like it.